channel. This is the first recording. This is the first video of, um, I guess, this series, because I do have a few videos from a few years ago. But I've recently been thinking about starting a, um, a series of videos where I talk about lots of different things. And uh, although I am a therapist and I will absolutely weave that in because it's just part of who I am and how I think, you know, I want this series and this channel to be about, not just about therapy, um, it's really about healing. And so I called the channel Deeper Still. Uh, I was inspired by a gardening uh, YouTuber that I love and follow. Um, her name is Jess on Roots and Refuge. Um, she has a tattoo, and I, I don't actually know what where it comes from, but her tattoo says Wilder Still, and um, I love it. And she inspired me to get on camera and talk and uh, talk about what I know. She knows gardening. Uh, I learned a lot from her. I love gardening too. And I'm sure that as I continue the series, I will eventually wind up doing some videos from my garden because it is such a source of actually growth and inspiration for me, not to mention joy and freedom. And so, but my channel, I'm calling Deeper Still because of how important it is to go deeper. Um, this is something I think about all the time, every single day when I, you know, watch anything, hear people speak, just kind of reflect on how people live their lives and the way they, the way they understand themselves. And I just keep thinking, oh, you got to go deeper than that. You got to go deeper than that. So I would like to share with you some of that process so that in a way, I would model it for you. I, although I'll, you know, probably won't be sharing anything very personal because I am a therapist and I don't want to overwhelm you. And it's not about that anyway. Um, I will share my inner feelings and my process. Um, and, um, you know, my goal is to be authentic. My goal is to be real and, um, there's no way to do that without sharing how I feel. So, um, so I'm going to light a candle. Um, it is something that I do before every day before I start my before I start my my sessions for the day. And um, as I light this candle every day, I set an intention for the day, and it's always the same intention. It's always the same. Um, I got this intention from a wonderful, wonderful woman, uh, Mary Reed. She has a few videos on YouTube. She's an amazing healer. And um, she's a Buddhist, but that's kind of like not the personality she leads with. Uh, it's just sort of weaved into her uh, being. Uh, but she's an awakened person and every time she speaks I, I you know I don't know if some of you have watched Eckhart Tolle and he's got like a calming sort of draws you in kind of personality or, or just way about him um I don't follow him I just kind of have that's that's like a popular reference um Mary Reed has that grounding beautiful essence to her and she um mentioned um this intention that she sets before her sessions, which is, may love be spoken. And so I'm going to explain what that actually means. Um, but first, I'm going to light this candle with the intention that may love be spoken in this channel and in today, because it is a work day for me, and I'm taking some time to record this first video um, because it is important. It's been on my mind and in my heart for a number of weeks and uh, here I am doing it. So what 
the intention means, may love be spoken, is not just about, oh, I love you, or I love the world, or, or even I'm grateful that can be there. But it goes deeper, right? That's, <laughs> I'm probably going to say that a lot. Um, there is love that wants to be expressed through us. It's not always about loving a thing or a person. It, it is simply energy, right? You can call it chi, you can call it prana, you can call it energy, um, life force, libido in, in psychoanalytic terms, right? Not necessarily sexual, just energy, right? We are born with this free flowing energy. And unfortunately for the vast majority of us, it gets squashed, it gets squashed out of us as we try to, you know, sing loudly and our parents say, be quiet, it's not the time for that, you know, or you say, well, I learned this dance and you were sent away or, hey, mommy, look, I painted this picture or I, I'm thinking, you know, whatever. And then it gets squashed and, you know, our parents may see, to, may think that it's, it's minor because whatever, it's just a day you know, oh, he'll draw another picture or she'll, I'm sure she'll dance again, whatever. But when you're tender and vulnerable and young like that, some of those things can really stick and really stay with us. And, and so that love, that expression, right, I'm kind of using those interchangeably, gets squashed, gets, gets kind of tamped down and, and stuck inside. And for the rest of our lives, it tries to come out. It tries to be expressed it tries to, you know, have us be who we are and be authentic. And, you know, sometimes that means being loud. Sometimes that means being sad. Sometimes that means being enraged. Um, so when I set the intention of may love be spoken, I'm speaking to or I'm intending for that which needs to be expressed, to be expressed, right? So that is the intention for this uh, channel. That is the intention for my everyday. That is the intention for my practice. And um, I don't always live up to it, I think, but the intention makes a difference. If you ever wanna learn about intentions, man, go check out um, Lynn McTaggart, Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This woman has done actual scientific experiments on a large scale of the impact of intention. Um, and I've done uh, a year long class with her um, on intending as a group and you know, holding intentions in our hearts and then intending for something to happen. And there is no way there is no way it doesn't work. There's, there are no two ways about it. It works. Intention is so powerful. And so setting an intention before you do things is um, a surprisingly powerful and underutilized thing that um, a lot of people don't, you know, don't even think about, but it's, it's really, really quite crucial. So, so, and um, the other thing I wanted to say about this, this channel and this video series is that my intention is, aside from the bigger intention of love being spoken, my intention is to be authentic. And so I'll probably have a point or two that I'll want to make sure to talk about each time because that's why I'm getting on camera to talk about it. But... I also am going to simply free associate and whatever comes to mind um, at any given moment, because that is how I can offer myself to you as an actual, authentic, spontaneous human being. Um, I look at some of my um, previous videos and, you know, I was a fairly young clinician, although, you know, who knows, right? You start you start seeing clients quite early in your training. But anyway, I was a young clinician, 
And I wanted there to be a video of myself speaking on my website or a few videos so that people could get a sense of who I am and how I hold myself and what my energy is like. And, uh, and so I needed to make those videos, but I look at them now and I'm authentic to some degree because it's just kind of who I am, but I could also see I was a little more anxious and I was a little bit more um, like, I don't know, st <laughs> structured and a little bit more rigid. Rigid is what I mean, rigid. And I'm sure there'll be moments of that here, but my intention, again, how important those are, my intention is to just talk, just be authentic and spontaneous. And um, because you can read a book if you want clinical information, you know, I could read a book probably, you know, <laughs> like I'm not here to, I'm not here to didactic didactically teach you. I'm here to teach you by being, and I'm not even trying to teach you. If, if you happen to appreciate something or take something in, that's great, you know, and um, otherwise we're just hanging out together and talking. I'm going to have some tea. Um, one last thing I want to say is that I think about healing all the time. I think about what healing means. I feel like healing is why we're here. You know, um, we are born with, with, you know, some endowment of prana and chi and, and, and purity and, and expression. And we're also born with some inherited traumas that are inevitably going to be passed down to us because of whom we're born to. So even though we're born pure and expressive, you know, we're going to be taken care of, hopefully, right? We're going to be taken care of for a long time by people who have their own traumas. And so we are you know, as soon as people can kind of recognize that and start their healing process. Uh, some people, you know, I remember picking up books when I was 12 and 13 from the library and trying to understand myself. Some people get to it later. But the point is that, you know, healing is what it's about. And I think about healing in so many ways. And, you know, my work is psychotherapy, psychoanalytic therapy, where I work one-on-one -on -one with adults to talk about their lives and help them recognize where they need to heal. Because a lot of people don't know, most people don't know. Um, and then also do the work of, of healing. And part of that healing is going deeper still. Part of that healing is knowing what oneself as deeply as possible you know, knowing oneself on levels that you're not aware of right now. So, you know, I've had 12 years of analysis. Some of it was part of my training, but still it was authentic to me. I was working on, on my own stuff while in training, you know. And yeah, I've healed a lot, but there are things in me right now that I don't know that I need to heal that... I will uncover and I'll hopefully talk about some of the methods of uncovering throughout the series. Um, my favorite is um, dreams and self-reflection via journaling. And journaling is not the only way, but this, these are my favorites. So, and so, this is really, I mean, I'm kind of going full circle to why I started this series and this deeper still channel that I see it as so crucial and so needed that that's what I want to offer the world and you and, um, yeah, and, um, 
I think about healing all the time and I think about the various roots and methods and, you know, there is psychological and mental, emotional, spiritual. I don't see healing fully um, being possible without the spiritual component, but it's not about religion. It's not about, you know, do you say a certain prayer at a certain time or whatever, but intentions are prayers, right? That is healing. It is healing to light that candle. You know, it is healing to have a ritual. Um, I study um, rituals and ceremonies by uh, um, various shamanic teachers, and I see how crucial it is and how it actually changes you to have a ritual, you know. Um, you know, you brush your teeth before you go to bed kind of ritual. That's one kind of ritual, but like lighting a candle before your work day, before you're about to connect to someone and, and make an impact on their energy. So, <clears throat> you know, there's somatic healing, you know, the various traumas that are held in our bodies. Um, if I had a separate, another separate lifetime, I would probably go and um, go do an entire somatic therapy program. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to cover for now. Um, it was just meant to be as a intro video. Let me know what you want me to talk about. If you happen to find this video, which would be very strange because <laughs> I don't have a lot of followers and I've never really focused on followers. You know, it's like when people, you know, I had a blog for years and I still do. It's called Loving Psychoanalysis, but I haven't written in it in a while because I think a lot of people don't have the attention span for um, reading these days, which is partly why I decided to do a video series. But um, if you do happen to find this and are listening to this and have made it all the way to the end, <laughs> you know, leave me a comment. Let me know if there are areas you'd like me to reflect on and talk about. I'll be happy to make a video for that. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me. Um, yeah, and hopefully I will see you later. Take care.